intimacy is is not something out here. Intimacy is an experience of the heart, right? It's it's the experience of the interior in, of the interior man and woman. It's 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 inside of us, right? And this is where Father PT and I were talking. Like we we have to come more and more into contact with the truth that, that God is inside me, that the Trinity dwells in me, the indwelling Trinity that constantly longs to live in intimacy with me. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey, I'm Father PT. Hey, everybody. I'm Father Innocent. You I threatened just wanted me. To, I just wanted to make you go while you're laughing. Yeah. Quick step over here. Before we do anything else, Father Pierre Toussaint. <laughs> last month. I, <laughs> last month. He was putting on the guilt trip because we didn't talk about your, your eight days fa- silent, I, bro. I, I can't. I'm not going to say I failed you. Mm. But I just. Um, you know, yeah, because failing me is not strong enough. <laughs> I would use to, stronger words. You, okay, what words would you use? Trampled, anyway, just trampled how, upon my heart. Father Pierre Toussaint was recently on a retreat, and and the, he would like to talk about so it. So were you, and I'd like to hear about yours. And he, so was he, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to share, Father? Um, it's this. Anyway, it wasn't going to be that long of a sharing last month, but that's so great. I mean, last week, but um, it just makes it sound a lot more dramatic now. Uh, it was a good retreat. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just wanted to bring up the fact that I was on retreat. It was good. The Lord was attentive to me. I tried to be attentive to Him. Yeah. And beautiful. so, um, so yeah, it's just a it's a gift and a privilege, and I understand. Yeah, like there's there's people like people have things that in their in their lives that maybe not other people have, right? So like you have a big family, you're blessed with just like a lot of just love in the house, or just all these fam- fam- familial tensions and, and joys. Uh, like we have a little bit more space for prayer as priests and, and religious. Um, and it's just a gift to be able to get away for eight days, be in silence, be directed. And so I just hear the Lord speak to me in, in clear and in beautiful ways. And so, so that's it, really. Thanks, Father Pierre Chisant. That's all I wanted to share um, about my retreat. Go ahead. What about your retreat, Father Mary? Did you want to share about that or no? Not really. <laughs> okay. My, it was great. It was good. It was yeah. very good. It was, a, again, a privilege, a blessing that most people don't get. So I'm grateful for that. Anything, Father Innocent? Good retreat? Yeah, I was way away with the brothers in Texas. It was a this was our community retreat, so it was um, a lot of quiet time, a lot of prayer time, but it was directed, and so instead of kind of being fully silent, um, a, a amazing priest from the Archdiocese of Boston came in, and so he gave us a few conferences, and then was available for brothers to meet with him, and um, just really beautiful. Did he have an accent? It definitely had an accent. Pocky car. And yeah. <laughs> Wicked smack. Definitely, definitely. And he has a cool, you guys know the, it's just worth saying, but I'm going to need you to help me with the story. Uh, the, the the movie, The Fighter. Yeah. Christian I've never B- seen it. Christian no. Bale. Yeah. yeah. I've seen it. And. Christian Bale and uh, what's his face? Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. So this priest was a wrestling coach. Okay. And, and wrestling boxing kind of thing like uh-huh. he was in that Boston scene mm-hmm. back back before he became a priest and whoever the main character is it Donnie Wal- or uh, Mark Wahlberg is the main character in that sh- who's ever the main yeah, boxer is yeah, it wins the title yeah yeah, yeah. anyway mm-hmm. it's the fighter whatever mm-hmm. that movie is so that guy has a period in his life where he struggles mm-hmm. and um where he does he, he's going to give up on fighting he thinks he's washed out he's like 26 and and Muncie, you said like 32 is like the, the 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 peak age for boxing or that that window. And so the guy was just going to give up and he was struggling a ton with life. And so father knew him. And so before he was a priest, father's the one that had this conversation like, hey, bro, you got some years left. Like you need to keep in it and stay at it. And mm-hmm. then the guy ended up winning the title like later on. Mm-hmm. And so the joke was Muncie was like, man, I didn't even make it in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. He's like, yeah, that was... When I was a wrestling coach, I'm the one who encouraged them, and it was a really beautiful moment where he told me to keep going in it. So, anyway, mm-hmm. Boston. I have uh, a loose end to tie up. Please. Oh, please do. And then a question mm. to ask. Mm. Maybe I'll ask Father Pierre Toussaint the question. Please. The, the loose end to tie up is I'm open to pickleball being a sport. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. 
I mostly was leaning into the idea that there's a lot of people who really like pickleball uh-huh. and just wanted to stir the pot. Well, you stirred it. Yeah, bro. I'm, but I'm I'm, I'm, I'm open to pickleball being a sport. Sweet. Which means Father Innocent probably won't play if you invite him to. <laughs> uh, Gosh. Nice. Just kidding. What about if you, you played against your brother? Guys, I'm not anti-sport. I'm not anti-competition. I just, <laughs> I just haven't, in this stage of my life, I just don't have a lot of room. When was the last time you were in some sort of physical competition? Mm, oh, you had to think about it. Because other, uh, yeah, other, other than... I mean, I run and work out downstairs with Father Angelus. <laughs> um, but like physical competition? I don't know. I can't, I can't even... <laughs> it's okay. The people of God love you. So do we. <laughs> well, no, I'm kidding. We do. So, f- Father PT. Father PT. PT. Talk to me. <sighs> Would you cons- like at what point would mm-hmm. you consider a particular animal being like your friary's pet? Mm. Like, <laughs> like if never. <laughs> well, how about if it like lived in the friary? Uh huh. Like li- lives. Well, yeah. What do you mean? It's like in the say friary? it's like so. It's like you know. There's certain conditions going on with the cat. It can't be outside anymore. Mm-hmm. The cat. Well, what, are the cat. Condi- <laughs> what are those conditions? What are those conditions? Here's the thing. If it's if we didn't adopt it or like anyway, so a random cat from the street isn't just gonna stroll into our house. So like there has to be steps that were taken that we wouldn't have taken yeah. for it to be a pet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So but to answer your question, I'd probably say within a month, two months. Because it's difficult for me to get in this place because I, I would just never find myself in this place. Like if, if you if like somebody from your house like talked about this pet this animal excuse me mm-hmm. at like a house meeting took it to the vet right moved it in got food especially for it so like, like would that be a pet well that'd be not only a pet but it'd be a problem because like we <laughs> never <laughs> we never talked about this as a house like mm. hey we're going to adopt this thing and and so i'd have a, a conversation hey can we talk about that after the house meeting you know like whatever <laughs> it is kind of conversation and then just be hey look bro i don't think we ever came up to this to a decision as far as like taking on this as a, as a house. So let's just leave the cat where he's at in the streets. I know it sounds cold and, and <laughs> <laughs> he was not even in the street. He's in the back. Ooh, oh, you better be careful. You better I know, be careful. I know. I know uh, what's going on here. It's not permanent, bro. It's not permanent. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? It's not permanent. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? What does this have to do with you? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Weird. I was just throwing that out there. That may not be permanent. Mm. I've had a, there's, there's, I've had a cat conversion. Meow. I have a friend, a, a prophetic friend. Ooh. who really likes cats uh-huh. and it can be lonely to be a cat person Cause, yeah i cause, agree because there's a lot of cat i would say the brother is a cat person that's this is how this we so get the, right into this problem <laughs> so the best part of me like is like oh i don't want someone to feel bad because they love cats you know mm-hmm. I'm, I'm i'm for that i'm, well, I I'm in support of you movement um i just i have allergies some people in the south do as well so like my eyes get puffy and sneeze and yeah. just to be honest, so there's so there was this cat that was coming around, kept coming around, then it got a cracker, and then somebody saw Father Innocent trying to give it a cracker, and then a cheese it. People a cheese it, that. A cheese it, and then the cat got pregnant. Oh, wow, that's a very big like, <laughs> story. <though>. Yeah, <laughs> cheese it, pregnant. Whoa, but okay. did did you know Father PT? Tell me that once a cat gets pregnant, it can keep getting pregnant. I did not. That's that's uh, God's genius in his, yeah, uh, allegedly. Design. Allegedly, we were Is we that were. True? We were it just d- seems too weird to be true, but go ahead. I mean, this is from the vet. This is what I. We so, just to clarify, while being pregnant, it could get pregnant again. Yeah. So, we took the cat. So, the cat had been, at least last year, the cat had been in our courtyard. It was kind of a therapy cat for the neighbors. The, some of the brothers liked it. So, we're like, yeah, we'll keep it around. But this was a young enough cat, and she was going into heat, and it was just crazy. There was like cats all over the place yeah. outside. And we're like, this, particularly this past month, where everybody was like, we can't do this again. Mm-hmm. So, brother. One of the brothers, I was going to say his name. One of the brothers took it to the vet to get it spaded, and then the cat, the doc, the doctor's like, uh, "Uh, this cat's pregnant and with eight babies." Wow. And the, and she, so she's the one who said, "If you want to keep this cat, or if you want to f- figure out how to get this cat back outside, you need to keep it inside because it'll just keep getting pregnant." That's when the next stop is to the animal shelter, <laughs> or like well, to some place where, hey, look. So, <laughs> so this was got all got complicated because the brother. But then at the same time, uh-huh. there was, and 
we don't need to talk about this, but there was a lot of intense things happening at this house. Right, right. So all this was happening at the same time. And I told the brother, I'm like, I'm going yeah. out of town. You just don't so I need you to talk you. to the brothers about this, which he did, but it was like the next, he, the cat was already in the house. Oh. Um, but I don't have any emotional space to talk about a, a stupid cat. <laughs> I am taking care of a real pregnant, people. <laughs> a pregnant cat, not stupid cat, please. Thank you for all the cat I am there. taking care of real people in this friary that yeah. that I'm I need to like be present to. I cannot take care of this cat. So anyway, that's how that happened. But yeah. the cat is still in the house and we're trying to find a family. And so this isn't this is not a pitch over the podcast to see if anybody has a family out there who would take a cat. But we're trying to find it a family. I think St. Leopold's is looking for a cat. St. <laughs> Leopold's is not looking for a cat. <laughs> and eight of its babies. <laughs> With confidence. Yeah. Meow. Meow. So here's the thing. You know how much I know about cats and their reproductive stuff? Zero. Uh -huh. I feel like there was still a miscommunication and that it was like the cat, if you keep it outside, it's going to keep getting pregnant. Like after this litter, it'll get pregnant again. I don't think it can get Well, but I think it was more like we had pregnant. It. But that's what happened. That's, what the, that's why the doctor said. I mean, that was communicated to me. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. It There's, wasn't out of the, it was mediated to you. It wasn't it was straight mediated. from the doctor. It oh. was mediated. The vet. And this could be very funny if there's anybody listening to actually knows. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was, something was mediated to me. And this was a classic local servant thing that there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And I knew my bandwidth. But then at the same time, I know there's like brother cares for the cat. I'm like, I just, value I just don't values. know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like, and so, and it was so literally. You, so you left. So you flew so, to Texas. Yeah. So, <laughs> Option so C. I left. Peace. When, <laughs> I, I flew away <laughs> with the clear conviction that you have gotten it. Tomorrow morning, you've got to talk to the brothers. And he did. And the brothers were very clear what they wanted. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest. The cat was already inside at this point. Right. And now I'm waiting for the cat to get out. There's a there's a particular brother. I don't know what he studied. Um, we know him. I'm not going to say his name, but he knows about animal reproduction. Uh, yeah, he because studied, of, because he studied part of his animal major. science. Yeah. So you should ask him if that's true or not. Because <laughs> he would probably know. know. Right? Yeah. Give him a quick call. Say, hey, look, bro. I don't know what your bandwidth's at, but I just need a, just a quick <laughs> consultation about a cat that I'm seeing or that's living in my house. And just uh, it would be helpful. And, so. and poor brother Colby. It's not brother Colby, but. <laughs> <laughs> Poor brother Colby like didn't want the cat in the house, and now brother Colby is kind of kind of like faced with just the reality that the cat's in the house, and he's such a good brother. He's like father, like I I love the brothers, and I mean this cat's okay, but like I can't, I just don't want the house. <laughs> I just I'm sorry, this is like a, a not a triggering thing, but like I just I've had a bad experience with cats in the house, and I could fair enough. I know you do. We have to keep moving, right? Yeah. Okay. Because there's a, there's a story attached to it, but it's okay. <laughs> Come back next week. <laughs> Yeah, we keep putting you off, bro. <laughs> next okay. week, can you talk about what's really going on in your heart next week? <laughs> I'll be honest, it's nice. The cat's name is Boots, has a little white paws. It's very, it's the most friendly cat ever. Anyway, so next week, we start the Prepare Your Heart series, which is the our Advent uh, reflection book. Get it. By Father Agostino Torres, uh, Ave Maria Press. All right. And if uh, thank you everyone for donating for this really life changing and up, like. <laughs> Uh, insightful I'm, I'm conversation no, at the beginning about cats. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. so, if someone we spoke a couple weeks ago, if someone was didn't necessarily like the banter, and they they gave us a thumbs down or whatever they did. One out of five stars. <laughs> it was like if I had five thumbs, they'd all be down. Um, <laughs> that's what they said. That's what a one out of five star is. Um, anyway, uh, uh, if you want to support the podcast, you can go to spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco. I feel a little insecure asking for that after this. Last 10 minutes of conversation. <laughs> uh, so thank you, anybody, for everybody. All right. So here's, it's, it's sort of a, sort of an actual question. We've, we had this sometimes where I, like, it's not like I have a total uh, <clears throat> handle on it, but I feel like you guys, particularly just in some of your life experience and pastoring and things like that, uh, know what, exactly what I'm talking about and can help actually like answer the question for me or help answer the question. And the, and the question is this, is just this, this balance of how much are we supposed to live uh, from the outside in versus the inside out. And by the outside in, I mean, kind of like this puts like, here's what it should look like. Here's what I should do. Uh, creating these these sort of structures and making these decisions from a place of of duty or from like really kind of the, the mind of like, here's what, uh, I should do this, so I'm going to do it. I should do that. I should this, I should, should, should. And kind of living like that versus, uh, 
if you will, like the inside out, which is a place like, okay, I'm doing this because I want to. Uh, here is my, here's the interior movement. So I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm living, if you will, kind of from this place of like, of internal sort of organic uh, motivation. And, and the reason, the reason I think it's important is because I think it's both, and I think it's both well integrated. Um, and, and part of it is it's, I've come across those, I come across more um, with some consistency, particularly just in our, those who we walk with, people who live from the, the place of like principles and like the place of should. And um, one of the things that kind of makes me sad about it is it, it <clears throat> seems to like you kind of, um, it feels like life becomes like a series of boxes to check and sort of like, and, and it just like, it, it's like, are you actually like living? And, and it's all from this intellectual place. I should do this, I should do this, I should do this, I should do this. And that like, becomes like their life. And, and it, it seems to lack some of like the, f- the freedom um, that we're made for. And so those are my, yeah, my opening thoughts are kind of like the, the question. Um, do you guys know what, does it make sense? Do you know what I'm talking mm-hmm, about? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tee you up here. Here you go. I'm going to do this for you, and then you're going. I'm going to give you a softball, bro. Thanks, Dad. Um, <laughs> just because we didn't talk about this earlier. So um, earlier, earlier, like yeah. nothing to do with this. Just you were talking about. We actually, uh, a li- maybe. I mean, I had read this, but mm-hmm. anyway. Great. So Shh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, okay. Here's what we're saying. Meow, meow. I really wanted to meow during the, mo- the opening monologue, but I resisted. You should have. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. So actually, it's, my my first thought is not too complicated, but I, but it's kind of creating a space because what we just want to I want to ask the question: What is driving our life? What, why do we do what we do? Right? What is driving our decisions? What is driving kind of um, you know the boxes we check? Like that's I think that's a really simple way of starting this. And my this this is kind of big, but I but you guys are, I mean are bold, but you guys are understand what I'm trying to say is that intimacy is is not something out here. Intimacy is an experience of the heart, right? It's it's the experience of the interior in, of the interior man and woman. It's 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 inside of us, right? And this is where Father PT and I were talking like we we have to come more and more into contact with the truth that, that God is inside me, that the Trinity dwells in me, the indwelling Trinity that constantly longs to live in intimacy with me. And therefore, every decision of my life, everything on the outside is driven by that one truth, that God is alive and God dwells in me, and that I want my whole life to be conformed to that truth, right? So intimacy with the living God is, is, is in me. I'm, ma- I'm made for this, the gift of baptism, the, the gift of the sacramental life, the gift of prayer, it's all, God is here in my heart, in my soul, and what drives me is intimacy. And so therefore, why I do what I do is because I, I long to, to live in this relationship and bear fruit in this relationship. And so therefore, when I, when, I mean, we've all kind of been in love or experienced the love of God and, 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 and deep friendship, right? Your, your motive, the drive changes everything when you're like, well, I actually love this person and I'm not doing this because I have to. Like we know what's right. Like I should treat this person with respect or I, I, I definitely have to be responsible for things in my life. But the drive and the fire are different instead of like, oh, it's not a burden. It's not because I have to. Um, but if it, everything's rightly ordered, and I want to say like if the foundation of our hearts and our lives are, are built upon this reality of longing for intimacy and, and the truth of it, intimacy with God and with one another, then I'm, I'm living from this deep place of my interior life and it flows out and it, and it, and it gives life to everything. Instead of trying to, if you're the opposite is living from the outside in and I'm just managing my life. I'm like, what does a Christian life look like? I'm complying. Oh, like, we know, we know all in our own stories, but also walking with people that like it's Christian life is not manage a uh, behavior management. Like I have to somehow like make all this look like what it means to be a Christian or what it means to be a Catholic or what it means to be religious or, or, oh, what does a good mom and dad look like? Okay. Just do that. It's not behavior management. That's like outside living and checking the box and 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 shaping something. <clears throat> no, Jesus wants us to live from the inside, the truth of our identity and relationship and intimacy and how this flows over. We were just talking a little bit about that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I gave the pregnant pause just to give an impression like I didn't know what we were talking about. We, 
It's interesting because I was thinking about this and praying about this before I even got the show notes. And so it's just the Holy Spirit. Bro, dude, I am so anointed. It's crazy. <laughs> Bro, I'm just so in tune with the Spirit. Just me. Come on. Just me. <laughs> but, um, but it's beautiful. I don't know what I want to say. I mean, because I just don't. Anyway, it's just a, it's beautiful to experience um, just knowing that there's a place in your heart, once again, that the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son dwell, right? And they have a home there. They live there. And from that place is where you should also live and make decisions and and come to this idea of, oh, I'm doing this because of this, as opposed to like we could live our lives, as we've mentioned, um, reacting to things. I was just thinking of my uh, my high school coach, Coach Perno, Coach Pern. If you listen to this, what up? He's not listening to this. I but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he would always talk about <clears throat> like the, the circumstances don't dictate the game, like for us, like as a team. Like we have a game plan. We, we kind of know who we are and like our identity as a team. Uh, we're going to control the pace. <laughs> we're going to be a certain way, right? And so uh, if it's last seconds of the game or if it's the opening tip of the game, we're going to be a certain way controlled, like measured and stuff like that. So once again, he would drill into us that we don't let the circumstances know, uh, dictate the, the tempo of the game. And I think it's kind of true, but I mean, it's a crude analogy, but the same thing is true for us as Catholics and Christians, where if we, we do have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, um, so the indwelling of the Trinity in our heart, and just to live from that place. Um, and it's just a lot easier to live from that place as opposed to constantly feeling like you got to run back and forth to do all these different things. And, and the beautiful thing is, is if you make space to listen to like what's happening in your heart, um, like once again, it's just a beautiful thing of, of life becomes easier in a certain, in a certain sense, right? Where, okay, like I'm just gonna be present to this moment right now because that's what the Lord's asking me to do. Um, because I think once we live outside looking in, uh, we're more focused on things out there and it causes anxiety, anxiousness, or like fear or confusion and or different things like that because like we're so worried about keeping up with the Joneses or like, oh, like how do how do I appear to these people or to these things where at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Uh, once again, like the Lord has chosen you uh, to live in your heart a particular way and he's particularly chosen you. And so that's the most important thing is to be present to that, that little, I don't know if Brother Colby described it this way, but like there's a little tabernacle in your heart, right? And just be present, be present to the Lord in that way. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, shout out to the Joneses. Brother Paul's doing good. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing great, actually. Um, but let's let's like flesh it out. And I know we're, we're on the same page with this, right? Mm -hmm. Is uh, this is this is where we can like uh, ground it in the catechism? Because just sort of a, of the convincing power of it. No, bro, I got it. Come on, right here. I got a catechism thing too. But go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Please. A vow is a free and deliberate promise made to God concerning a better possible good, made possible through the virtue of religion. You guys got that? <laughs> no. That was just me showing off that I remember one thing what from a long time ago. Yeah. That's the <laughs> definition of a vow. <laughs> um, <laughs> the catechism, it talked about, right, like, um, yeah, we have to pray with, We have to pray at all times, but you're not going to pray at all times. You don't pray at particular times, right? Mm -hmm. And for this, this is, this is part of the balancing of it. Like, uh, if someone's like, well, I'll just pray when I pray. Well, that, that's not living from the inside out the way we're talking about it, right? It is it is helpful as well to have like some structure to your life. Like here are, I'm going to pray like in the morning. And it's not just, we don't just go about life totally um, without sort of rudder and sail and direction, right? That's not what we mean by uh, living from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, with just so how you guys want to just kind of re like reflect on the yeah, there's a there's a tension for sure, and I'm glad you brought that up because we're definitely not saying that the outside doesn't matter. We're just wanting everything in right order. We're living from a place where we're anchored in a place like the, there's a foundational place from which we live to which drives everything. Mm -hmm. and I think that's just important. Um, I also just want to <clears throat> maybe the example is um, like when you're in love, you d you just do things for different reasons, right? Early on, maybe. Is you're 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 making you're 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 using a ton of effort to be try to impress the girl or whatever. Like okay, I'm like driving this thing and I and I'm working really hard. But when you grow in trust and confidence and you know that like when people are in love, there becomes like an an ease or an effortlessness, and it's not always about like having to do stuff or I like there can be like a sense of like I don't know like you're working hard at the beginning and you go on a date and everything's planned and then as you grow in love. 
um, there's just an ease. We can just go for a walk. We don't have to talk that much. We're still living from the inside place, but, <clears throat> but as we grow and mature and have these experiences, I think life, it just begins to change where I can, I'm less anxious about doing stuff and I'm, I'm just more open and more trusting. So I think it, it also is just a way to, another way to look at it is, or, or just have a different view is, is that it's okay that at the beginning, like you said, if you, you want to go in prayer and you don't make time and be disciplined, it's never going to work. But our hope is that as you grow in love with the Lord, that, that the burden becomes light. And that we, we grow more and more from the inside. Wow, like we're anchored in love and I'm confident and I know who I am in Jesus. And so therefore on the outside there, there can just be, I can hold things more lightly. And I'm not anxious all the time about like doing all these things. All right, I got to get my rosary and I got to do this. I got to do this. That was an example we had used earlier or on in the show prep. Um, so it's not because it, it's not because I have to do things, but I'm anchored in this place of love. Now I can do things with greater ease and confidence and living in a loving relationship rather than like maybe just having to do them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there's a, a big part of it too, is just being <laughs> obedient uh, to the station of life that you're in, right? Um, I think it's a good way to measure it too, where if I'm starting to say no to things that I should be saying yes to, uh, because uh, this isn't like just the, the whole like rudderless ship thing that you said, um, just because like I, I feel this conviction like from inside out where like the Lord just wants me to pray more. And so, I'm gonna start getting late to work because I'm gonna go to mass and like just start making these decisions that, okay, um, is there a different way we can, we, we can approach this? Um, maybe that's not the Lord that's inviting you to, to, to like say no to like what you have to, you, what you already committed to and said yes to, because once again, of your station in life, but um, to look at it, I guess, creatively, like in love where, okay, I, I want to be basically the goal of like a holy hour or going to mass more or to praying the rosary is to be in relationship with the Lord. Um, so just like throughout my day, like at work or just like being attentive once again, like, okay, like he lives in me. So like I get pause during work and just like, you know, just, just say a quick Hail Mary or just like to say like a quick Jesus prayer, whatever it is. Um, the consistency of that and like building that I think is, I don't want to say just as good, but there there is something that's that's worthwhile for that also too. Um, and that's living from the inside out as opposed to yeah, just trying to make a, a super detailed schedule um, and making sure my holy hours in this time and that time. And to say for some people that may be helpful too, you know what I mean? Like just because their life may totally be in the total opposite direction where there is no structure. Maybe the Lord's invite you to do structure. Um, but once again, I guess the thing is, as long as it comes from the Lord and the and the point is for intimacy and relationship with the Lord and you're being obedient to like what your station in life is, like a clear, and a, maybe a clear example is, so I was talking to a brother about this. I was like, I just enjoy the silence of the eight days. And he's like, I went on, on a retreat too when I was a student and um it was eight days and I just told my my spiritual director, like, I'm gonna drop out of classes and, and just, I just wanna pray all the time. And the spiritual director was like, no, get back to school. <laughs> like, you know, and so if if that's the the movement, like I'm just gonna leave everything just to go pray, the Lord's appreciative of that. But like at the same time, you're a student, go be a student, study and do these things. Um, but to be creative as far as the space you create um, and even to like just being attentive to what's happening in your heart, specific to that relationship that he's trying to to build, but even more so how he's present there. And so the, if you guys can help kind of offer the, maybe some of the remedy here, the, the particular person that I would like this art, this um, episode to serve is, uh, is this type of person is the, they're like, they're like, they're, they're very well intentioned. Right. And they really want, they always want to do the right thing. Right. And, and um, it's a little bit of a, like, so there's like a perfectionism in it. And it's like, but, but it's, it's a, you might have a hard time wrestling with like, well, what's like, if we're not trying to, to do the right thing all the time, like how did, like, I, I want to just honor God with everything. So, so it's like, there's like a kind of a tension is it doesn't quite make sense um, how you could not always want to be doing the exact right thing. But the, I think, I feel like my, my concern with it is that it's almost like, um, you're on a trip or you're at the Tanya Nika zoo mm -hmm. or you're at a basketball game or something like that. And what the, the way you're processing everything, the way you're thinking about it is like, is for your social media. And so the, the concept thing is like your, but before you go out, you're whatever, you're taking pictures of yourself before and okay, well is it, and like, you're even getting dressed, not like, what do I want to wear? But it's like, okay, what's going to look good for the photo and then who this thing. And then you take, and there's like, you're, you're, you're at the zoo or you're at the game or you're at the concert 
and the whole time like you're you're there but you're actually not really there you're you're looking comes almost like from the outside in and um and again like filtering everything through like this like okay what's going to be best for this other thing and not just like being there and enjoying it and, and it's like you're not just like you're almost like working you're not just enjoying the concert or whatnot and um and i feel like for a lot of folks this can be their experience of the relationship with god is they're always like they're kind of they're always it's almost like yeah they're not just there praying just being with god having the freedom just to be present but they're always kind of like self-reflecting and always almost on the outside and like looking at okay my I should be sitting, I should be doing that. I'm going to do this because I should do that. And then and there's a little bit of like a, maybe a, a fear approach and a perfectionist approach to God. And it's not just like being free and being in a relationship and just like, it's almost like I put put your sort of spiritual phone down and just like be here. Um, first of all, does the, pro, the, the, the symptoms, the problem make sense? And what, like, what do we, how do we, what do we tell them? Yeah, I mean, because it's it's basically part and parcel with how we live. Um, like once again, like most of our lives, it's about performance or like how like how am I measuring up with other people? How am I um, like grades, for instance? Like we get graded and then we compare grades with other people, and or like if we go to school and like this is the way in which I dress and like with the people I fit in with and what does it say about me? And so like it's always about like outside looking in, and so it's a radical shift to have to pray and to to approach our spiritual life this way. But we could. I uh, meaning like we do take that onto our spiritual life. And I think we, we oftentimes um, do this, but this is part of the growth is it's, it's breaking the habit. And just to say, God, like God doesn't care <laughs> at the end of the day, like <clears throat> about the exterior, he cares about the interior, right? And the beautiful thing is that he desires for us to live from that place. And um, and yeah, and just to break the habit, if you will, of of trying to, um, to live from this exterior place. <clears throat> I lost my train of thought. There was an example I was gonna give, but but it's okay. Um, but the truth is that once again, it's just to know it's, it's step one of a long process where we have to somewhat just, okay, Lord, this is where I'm at. And so I'm gonna need your help with this, uh, because I do desire to live interiorly. And as we start to come to understand like, man, I'm just like, I'm praying a rosary, like when I'm walking so I could, you know, be seen as that guy type of thing. Or, um, like I want to have a conversation, conflictual conversation with somebody about like something they're doing wrong because like it's a public setting and I want to be seen as that person. Like, okay, like if you, if you notice those, those are habits or things that you do, um, just to bring it to the Lord as far as like, just help to, to, to break that habit. But at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's difficult but with the Lord. I think it's, it's possible. Yeah. yeah Father, I, Father Mark Mary, really, I, I think the example is strong, um, the social media thing particularly, and I'm kind of challenged by it because I think it's real. And I think there's some just underlying, just uh, there's some underlying powers at play, right? Um, we were recently at some formation days with Ian Butler, and uh, I don't think he listens to this podcast, but um, he's an amazing man, Catholic man, uh, Catholic counselor, and he's an incredible teacher. And he talks about, and this is going to be super overly simplistic, but psychologically, emotionally, we, we, we walk around because in our woundedness uh, with scripts he, and they're, they're just mechanisms of which we, in which we live. And there's, so there's a perfectionistic script. There's an insecure script uh, that we, we like put on. And because we, we want to, again, it's, it's usually a reaction to our woundedness and, and I want to be safe in the world and I want to be good enough and I want to belong. So I put on the, I have to be perfect and perform script so I can, I can survive and, and be who everybody needs me to be. Right. And, and guys, this drives a ton. I mean, I don't want to project on you guys personally, but I think it drives a ton of, of, of our motives and it dri just drives a ton of our life. Right. Like I, I think I have to be perfect. And if I'm not perfect, I'm not going to be loved and I'm, and I'm not going to be, uh, like I'm going to be rejected. There's so much fear of rejection and not having a place and all these different things. And so we have to come, we just have to come to grips with this guys, because I think it affects, absolutely affects our, our spiritual life and, and with the Lord. And so we can go to prayer just thinking that I have to be perfect. And, and if I don't do this, if I don't do that, or if I don't have this emotional experience in prayer, then it's not real and I'm doing something wrong. And, and so therefore we can get stuck on trying to perform and be perfect for the Lord. And we can do all these things. Okay. I got to say my rosary. Well, well, like your rosary was just kind of 
you know, sometimes our rosaries are just like kind of militated out because I have to do it, but where's your, where's our hearts in it? You know, like I always say, Hey, say one decade with your heart rather than <laughs> like, you know, thinking that you have to do like, do just do all these things. Right. Only because we, again, what's driving it is perfectionism or performing for the Lord, um, to be loved and to, um, to have a place. Um, so guys, I think it goes back for me is it's a, it's an identity. It's an identity battle. Who am I? And who am I in, in, in the eyes of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit? Who am I in the eyes of our lady? And can I live in that place in freedom and knowing that I don't have to be perfect for Jesus to love me? Mm -hmm. My prayer doesn't have to be perfect or it doesn't have to be like another brother's or doesn't have to be like this saints or my life. Sometimes it's like a mess sometimes. And, and like I had a great intentions of praying, but now it's 10 o'clock at night and I feel like my heart was far away from the Lord, like all day. Okay. Well, what does the Lord want to do there? Mm -hmm. He still loves you and wants to come to you and he wants to speak to us. Right. And he wants to care for us. So it, I think it, it is an identity battle, which we talk a lot about on this podcast. Like, can we receive the gift of who we are and and not let other things drive us away from that place of security in him? Or we going to be, are we going to give into that perfect, perform, and secure, all these different things that that just rob us of of the gift of of living in the freedom? I remember now. Great. It's um <clears throat> So like going back to the example, right, of, of the basketball game or whatever thing you're doing, uh, but you're worried about perception and how it's going to be. You just, you just miss the moment, right? Like yeah, you miss like what's happening. You miss, you, yes, you're, you're looking at the concert or whatever, stuff like that, but um, there could be an awesome play that the basketball game you didn't, you didn't see like, and then somebody's like, oh, you, like you look up real quick because you're checking your social media feed to see who's commented or retweeted or posted whatever that you you put on. And, um, and the moment is huge with God. Like, I, I think I've said this before. He didn't say like, I am who will be. He didn't say I am who was. He says, I am who am. And the present moment is where he desires to be found, like in the here and now. And I think this is a part of, right? Like, um, yeah, just living on the outside, uh, meaning like who's going to look at this or like, um, yeah, how am I going to be perceived and stuff like that? As opposed to like, like what's God doing right now in the here and now? Uh, because the moment's huge for God and he wants to encounter your heart right now as it is in this place. Maybe you might not be comfortable with it, but that's how he wants to to come to you. And if we're more present in the moment, we're more just even training our eyes with faith to see like, okay, God's going to do something in the moment. And things that become, things that maybe they were, that were burdening or, or just things that we didn't like, we could look at it and change our perspective of, oh, wow, like this thing I used to really get up, upset with, like in this moment, God's trying to say something to my heart. And instead of like initially like reacting from your heart, like this sucks or whatever it is, like, Jesus, what are you doing here? Like, this is, this is ridiculous. Like, Jesus, what's going on? Um, and I think it changes that way as opposed to like, once again, receiving something from the outside in and allowing that to really influence my heart and to change things uh, in a negative way and, and move me away from that space where it, it is sacred with the Lord. And so, um, yeah, so it's about capturing the moment specifically um, by being present to him and recognizing that he's there with you. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of ways, probably it's hard, I think, to really answer this and incorporate it uh, unless you're having like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably, it's a little bit difficult because like the, the details and the specifics matter and matter. And there is, a, there's a dance and there's a balance between like, okay, operating, okay, wait, what's the right thing to do? And then like, what am I feeling? But, I, but probably particularly in relationships with people and the Lord is if you, if you find yourself kind of being out of yourself looking down like that the movement is like okay let me just be present here right okay mm -hmm. no i'm just gonna be i'm gonna be present here to the lord and i'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna move from this place of orchestrating and almost like playing this kind of game and um and i'm just gonna like be present and, and live in the moment because because i think other areas this happens i think um with like maybe like fraternal correction or something like that. Like for a lot of people, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm with these situations and I, and I hear this person say this thing and that thing, and I should correct them. And I should, I should stand up for this. I should. And then you like, you might do it, but you're still like doing it from the outside. Like you're, you're kind of like, it seems like you're like in like a video game, like playing yourself and you end up doing it awkwardly and you end up like hurting people or yourself. And it's, um, and uh, what's the other, or like, like, okay, I should be, you know, there's somebody who comes, okay, I should be charitable towards this person. 
and you're doing all these things that you think you should do instead of just like being there and like loving the person and it just again it kind of is like awkward um so probably i think that's my maybe my proposal if if your relationship with other people with the lord particularly is as if you're like a spectator or you're uh i don't know i don't know the other word i want to do like some like vr you're like you're playing like a vr version of yourself or something like that like come to the present and and just like be there because again yeah i think in the presence the yeah and it's like you're fantasizing like sometimes we have these conversations in our minds like we, we're living in a fantasy world of like yeah. what we want things to be like or oh if i did this what would that be like or like we kind of make ourselves the hero or we make ourselves the saint and if you ever if we're doing that and this can happen in the really like communal life a lot where like i'm like arguing this person in my head like beating up beating up bullies in my head all the time or like just like well we're not we're not in the present moment and we and we can come back and be with the Lord and, and kind of begin again. Yeah, it's talking about once again, like in human relationships where I'm sure people miss, well, it happens to me, I'll just put it this way. Uh, you ever been talking to somebody and you not really listen to what they're saying, but or you're like trying to think of yeah. the next thing to say or, okay, I'm dismissed that already. And I, oh, this is where he's gonna go or she's gonna go with this thing, as opposed to, I'm just gonna listen to this person. Yeah. I'm going to not have anything like preconceived notions or like, like look at it a certain way. Like, Oh yeah, they're saying that because they're conservative or like whatever it is, you know? Um, I think it's a part of it, right? Where you're just able just to be present to the person before you and just to listen. And I think that could also be the way in which we approach God, right? Like where, um, and, and particularly with prayer, I know this is a little bit different, but just to, okay, Lord, like whatever this time is, like as far as our prayer time, like it's up to you. I'll let it look however you want to look. Um, but I'm just gonna be present to you. And so like, then, you know, like if in my prayer, I'm starting to think about like, man, I wonder what's for lunch or like, oh my gosh, I gotta do these things. Like, okay, Lord, I'm leaving that to the side. I'm just present to you and like how your heart wants to move into my heart. Or, like, you know, just really staying focused with what's happening for, for prayer um, and fighting for that. I think once again, if you fight for those things, like it starts to play out in your day to day where, um, yeah, instead of living in this place that's, that's not real or not true or trying to anticipate or maybe even living in the past, um, just to, to be present to like what's happening around you and it's like oh wow like taking things in as they are as opposed to attaching labels to them or or creating them to be something else and so great anything else meow no that was great that was really good meow you like that that's why i get paid the yeah. big bucks i just i certainly i one of the down the road, one of the things I'm reflecting on and going to be doing some research on is the, the relationship between uh, like following the law, but not falling into legalism. Mm. And I don't really know that I know how to do that uh, like totally because like you have to follow the law, but you also there's this thing called legalism where it's like you get in trouble and it's too much and it's like not a good thing. Um, but I think so, there's something about the heart there though. Right, like we're, right. we're living from the heart rather than exactly. like legalism yeah. is heartless. Mm -hmm. Like it just, you're like a robot and just doing these things. Something. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, uh, this whole conversation in my mind and my heart's been screaming like the Pharisees, right? Like that's why the Lord's constantly just railing against them because the heart's divorced from actually what should be happening. Mm -hmm. um, because they're they're all about the rules, they're all about the laws, but they're missing the people in front of them. Yeah. And in particular, right, the Lord talks about how you, um, you call certain things korban, like this is for the temple and your parents are at home and, they, and they're struggling. You know what I mean? Like the heart says, I'm gonna help mom and dad as opposed to take this money and I can't touch it because it's Corban. I think it's a part of it where, um, like once again, I'm recognizing how the Lord is inviting me to act in this moment and maybe contrary to what I thought, but the movement's there with him as opposed to um, these are the principles and I have to stick this way. And so Yeah, I'm definitely a guy who my tendency big time would be to live from the outside in to be up in my dome, not enough heart. I would have been a great Pharisee. <laughs> I think we all would. By great, I mean not great, but like. Like rock the Pharisee. I would have, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of Pharisaical tendencies. Put a big old headdress and your phylacteries all over the place. Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh, looking fresh. <laughs> Come on. Wait. Outfit of the I day. Was, what was your I got my... liner? I'm so inspired. <laughs> no, anointed, bro. Anointed. <laughs> bro. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep working on it, but also I just when I when I encounter it in other people, it's like no, 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 like, mm -hmm. like yeah, relationship with God's not just a a taskmaster, a checker of your checked boxes, but like wants to love you and be loved by you. Mm -hmm. So, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep working on it little by little. Uh, if you're going to translate that to another language, what would that be? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I was trying to think of something oh. creative. Maybe Poco Poco. Father okay. Innocent, can you just... <laughs> Cat boy, can you close close for her? <laughs> hey, how did I get cat boy? A couple weeks ago was the you were, Sultan of Silence. You're the Sultan of Silence. Oh wow! You like that? No, cat boy better. <laughs> <laughs> now you're the Shh, now you're the rescuer. The Son, Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Oh Jesus, we love you and praise you and thank you and thank you for your presence here. We just asked <clears throat> for just a new anointing on our hearts that we could be men and women who who pray and live deeply from the heart um, and and just taste the freedom, what it means to live in relationship with you in that way. Uh, we give you all of our actions and everything on the outside, um, that it would just be a fruit of our, our intimacy and, and real relationship with you. We just ask for the confidence um, to just take the next best step in growing this freedom. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 It's just really beautiful what you guys are doing, though, at St. Joseph's, bringing in, you know, the misguided Look at you. at risk Talk youth. Talking about outside looking in, like you lived there for three years, you guys at St. Joseph's now. You know. The at risk <laughs> youth. The, That's a cat. Single, yeah. single moms. Single moms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna, are we going to talk about these mugs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I didn't get a name. No, he didn't write his name. It was one of our vocation visitors. Okay, oh. this... These, this is actually we got really some well custom done. made mugs high quality that mm -hmm. are kind of inside jokes which i really appreciate it yeah. says father innocent i love you father but i'm with father mark mary on this one for the crossover so you guys show the camera it's a coffee mug with the cross with properly the ro rosary cross i'm with you about silence and being with the lord hearing about what he says and wants it's beautiful i wonder did he graphic design these or draw he these? To, he must bro. have i mean that's like What's yours, Father Pierre Toussaint? So if you can see in the camera, uh, the story of you in the river is the inspiration of your mug. So basically, it's just this little guy diving into um, shallow water, hitting his head, and it says, caution, shallow coffee, just stand up. I so like that. it's funny. And I got a brick on the top of a toilet seat. Oh, why? Yes. Why? <laughs> because it's the right thing to do. Oh. I mean, Did Father Angels get one? He did, but we'll let him Yeah, we'll let him his, you know. Okay. So it's very strong. The mug game keeps getting elevated. Mm. So thank you. See you next week. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well. And I know 